I was checking the breakdown request form this morning, and I saw this one. It says France and New Zealand. I was like, huh, what are those two up to? 60-second minute. Tamak flying across the other side of the pitch to break tackles coming out from behind his own try line before a beautiful no-look offload. And obviously, I know exactly what all those words in that order mean, but I pulled up the video that they linked just to be sure it was something cool and we want to talk about. So I got it, and then I was thinking, huh, New Zealand and France, do those nations get along? Do they like each other? What's their history here? This one's brought to you by DraftKings. Obviously, use promo code Jombo when you download the app. So then I went to Wikipedia because I just had to scratch this itch. Like, do they get along? What do their relationships look like? And then they say that, you know, they have been rocky at times, but the relationship was severely jeopardized by the sinking of the Rainbow Warrior. Since then, there's been animosity among New Zealanders towards the French. I was like, whoa, I had no idea that the ship, the Greenpeace, trying to keep the peace in the Pacific Ocean because that's where the French would test their nuclear bombs they would just hover them over the ocean and explode them into the air and they got real mad about that so they're like fine we won't do them in the air anymore we'll do them underneath the water but that would sink the islands it would crack the, the structures they had to move people from one island to another so i'm watching this documentary now i'm like an hour in riveted by this whole story talking about how these two french spies from the french government were sent to sink one of these protest ships off the shores of New Zealand, the Greenpeace, and they just sunk it, and then they went to jail, and then New Zealand got paid like $10 million or something from France because they admitted that their government did this, and the spies were supposed to get 10 years for murder, but then they only got three years, but then France let them out after only two, and New Zealand was pissed because they were like, what it's all about? Unbelievable stuff. As for the rugby, bit of a history here as well. France has not beaten New Zealand since 2009. I had zero gray hair back then. Lost 14 matches in a row to New Zealand, and they have not beat New Zealand in France on their home soil since 2000. Been over two decades since the All Black came in and lost a match. Now, I do believe New Zealand had just lost to Ireland before this, so they're coming off some bad times, and France takes advantage of it. In the first half, France goes up 7-0, 17-6, 22-6, 24-6. Now we're in the second half. New Zealand's come back. It's within two. They boot it down to the other end zone just to get rid of it, and this is where the play happens that we're talking about. Now, number 10 picks up the ball. He could just put it on the ground, and then France would punt it, basically, and France would lose possession, but they'd flip field position, which would favor them. But instead of doing that, he's got the confidence to be like, nah, I'm going to run this out. He stiff arms that guy, gets around that guy, draws the last defender in with the no-look offload, a term that I've known for a while now, and they just flip the field coverage. So a stiff arm there wraps all the way around there. Number 15 is coming behind him. Now, this is the look. He sees him peeking behind him one way, and he's like, all right, and then waits. Bam. Now, I wish he didn't when he flips it. You know, I wish he didn't follow with his head. But either way, amazing play. I see why they're so excited about it. It's a really confident play because, you know, it's like super risk, no reward. You just touch the ball down, you flip the field coverage. But in this way, he flips the field coverage and keeps it. And I just love the overhead shot here, this last defender, I mean, and then this is the guy he flips it to. The guy he flips it to, I mean, he, he, he traps him so close before getting rid of the ball. But that by the time the trail runners got it, he's tied up, and now he only has one guy ahead of him. Unfortunately, I wish he would have ran it all the way for a try, or these two did, but they didn't. It goes down, but France does take advantage of this because after a couple messing around, a New Zealand dude's going to get a yellow card. You, yellow card, which lead to the guy kicking the ball, looking up into the cloud, like reflecting on his life and all that it means to him and someone beautiful. And then he takes the kick and that puts him up 30 to 25. And then they would get another try, which I kept watching the game, obviously. And I love this one because New Zealand's going to go to the left and they're going to go left. And that dude reads the play perfectly, picks it off in between the shovel pass. Bam. Puts it on the ground. That's another try. The French are going to beat New Zealand for the first time in 21 years. Look at that. Thank you. I'll take that one and score with it. Please and thanks. All mine. This one is brought to you by DraftKings. If you bet on France in the DraftKings app, you would have been, you know, feeling good about yourself. New Zealand. 
not the way they wanted to end the season, losing to Ireland and France. Oh, my God. Thanks, DraftKings. Promo code Jomboy when you download the app. What's up with the car on the field? Someone let me know. It was driving all over at different intervals. And I, why? What is it just an advertisement? Does it deliver the ball? Is there a system for it? Good job. Good job by me. Good job by you. Good job by uh, France.